Okay, so we will begin with the Voice for America. May our feeling penetrate to the center of our heart and seek in love to unite with human beings seeking the same goals, with spirit beings who, full of grace, behold our earnest, heartfelt striving, strengthening us from realms of light and illuminating our life in love. Gail, you're next. Thank you. Yes, I have the great pleasure of introducing Frank to you all tonight, although I'm sure he doesn't need much of an introduction. Um, Frank is a native Californian who, as you probably all know, lives in San Francisco. Uh, his father was an aeronautical engineer and in college, Frank studied industrial arts, art and psychology. He taught art and architectural drawing for more than 30 years in high schools and colleges across the country and sacred geometry in the teacher training program in San Francisco. I remember with great fondness his visits to Rudolf Steiner College in Fair Oaks and his connection with Dennis Klocek's Consciousness Studies program and his interest in the work of Audrey McAllen. He continues to present his research at international conferences and Waldorf schools in the United States and Europe. Now, as an artist, sculptor, and geometrician, his encounter with the work of Rudolf Steiner stimulated a very keen interest in the relationship between spirit and form. And in the year 2000, he made an amazing discovery, a hitherto unknown seven-sided geometric form now known as the Chesterhedron. He continues to uncover relationships between this new geometric form, the world of formative forces, and the world of nature. And he has been particularly prolific in his research into the geometry, structure, and physiology of the human heart. So Frank, we're very happy to have you with us and looking forward. Yes. Oh, thank you very much. <clears throat> That was, that was a nice introduction. Um, I retired when I was uh, 59 and I came to Rose Steiner College and um, I ran into Patricia Dixon and Dennis's class and she introduced me to these atomic forms, which I didn't know anything about. Um, and then I asked her, where's the seven? Because there's a six and there's an eight. Uh, where's the seven? No, there isn't one. So that that's what happened. And I'm still working on it. Um, and um, I'm not complaining or regretting anything. It's just been a great adventure. Way beyond anything I would expect. Even today. So um, what I thought I'd do is to start out with geometry that was um that started out um probably with the first boy or girl that went down to the beach with a stick and drew a line in the stick in the sand with a stick and that would be the first girl or boy um that would inhabit the earth so that's how old geometry is so I'm just going to give a brief history because I have discovered something in the last week that is beyond anything I would have ever imagined. It's going to change geometry everywhere for anyone who's serious. Okay, so I'm also going to um, show you where it has been um, presented to doctors and how the doctors react to certain things I've discovered. Uh, and then I'm uh, going to try to make it short so you can ask a lot of questions because I think we all learn that way. 
anyway, so the first thing, the, the first organic shape that arrived on Earth is a circle. Yeah. And that's organic. And then the, the, the first straight line form in the Earth is a triangle. So this is the largest area of any two-dimensional form, and this is the smallest area. So the idea is to put them together. So this happens, okay, uh, and, 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 and geometry in the, in the beginning is that you make a vesica. That means you take one circle and you take the center of that circle and you stretch it out where this line is over to the other circle's center or this center can go over to the periphery or this center can go over to the periphery. Either way, you get two circles. Those two circles are probably the most important discovery in geometry in the history of the world, are these two circles. And these two circles is what makes up the human heart. So one of the things that's interesting about it is, is if you draw a line right straight down the middle of this vesica shape, there's a vesica shape, like an almond, you could draw two triangles, of course, because there's two circles. And what's so important about that is the distance from this point to this point is root three. So that means both triangles with their red lines, all of them are root three. All right, so the first indication of this type of geometry used in the human heart is somebody took this circle and they push it into the back into this circle because see this this represents a duality and the and the and the balance of that. So somebody decided, well, I'm going to put this circle back into this one, okay? And this is what they came up with. Okay, that's the heart chakra, which is even used today. You can imagine how old it must be, but it's even used today. And in the middle of the chesterhedon, there's a six-pointed star, and the chesterhedon has 12 edges. So it correlates to the 12 petals. Okay, now we're going to go into my work with this duality of two circles. So in my example, I have added um, two lines. And they make a cross right in the middle. Those two lines is all it takes to make the geometry of the left ventricle of the human heart. These two lines make everything. This one and this one, which is a somewhat cross. Everything is taken from that. Nothing on a ruler of any individual uh, segments dividing anything. You don't need anything like that. All you need are those two lines. Okay, so one of the things about this that I wanted to know is what's going on. So most of the geometries that you see around, they will stretch a line. I have a stick. But they'll stretch a line between the two triangles. Yeah, you don't see that too often. There it is. You see that line goes from one corner to the other corner in both circles. I also added a green line, which I'll explain later. But the, <clears throat> so if I take this one stick and then take a shorter stick, the shorter stick, will go across that circle. But there's also a little one here. And this is littler than this one. They have the same proportion. 
So when you want to look at a form, you have to find its base. So I took the cube and the base of any form, any geometric form is the first edge that is exposed. So in a cube, it's that one. And it has 12 of those. And those 12, okay, line up exactly with the base of the, of the cube. That distance across is that first line. Let's see if I can get it so you can really see it. Now I'll roll it back. See how it lines up? It's the same length as the edge of the cube. So the other one, this one, that I showed you first, I can throw it into a cube and it sits at root three. Perfect. And there's one at the bottom and root three goes right to the cross coordinate of the cube. Perfect. So from one, which is the base, this is root three. So the very center of the cube comes from the vesica. All right. See, all vesicles come from a tree of life, the fruit of life, the flower of life, and the seed of life. These are all cubes. As you don't know it, but these are all cubes. I don't know how many people do know that. <clears throat> I'll go back to this little drawing, which is the vesica with the with the cross in the middle, green circle. Okay, so I want to know. What this is, I mean, I saw this. This is the vesica, not this out here or here. This is what I'm interested in. So I took that out. There it is alone. There are the two circles. I was going to actually draw this for you and i had the paper and all this stuff i was going to draw what i discovered but i have it here drawn already so i'll just use it let's see i can get it here 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 we start we're going to start now to get closer to the heart so here is root three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line. <clears throat> I'm going to put it up on this edge, which is the same. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swing it to the side like this. And I'm going to stop it between these two points, exactly the size of the green line. So if I slide the green line up, that's where the root three would hit. That's how open it is. It happens to be 36 degrees. Now, now I'm going to take this corner and this corner, whoops, I have a line here now, and I'm going to draw a line to meet these two points, and I'm going to use this line. You see this, see this how it's going like this? If you duplicate it over here, we're starting to see what I'm getting at. 
And what I'm getting at is this. This came from the best I could. So let's see. Uh, let's see if this guy is on track or not. Remember, this is just coming on the Vesica. Okay, so then let's see if it's the same a distance apart at the top. Oh, it is. Now let's take half of this. This is a triangle, so that's a hypothesis. I take the hypothesis and let's see how it works out with the edge. Again, it's perfect. I have just made two shapes two faces and those two faces make up the left ventricle of the human heart now i didn't know how to do this okay i knew that the form came from a five-point star okay but i didn't know i could construct that shape that kite, how could I possibly make that shape out of a vesica? So, here are the two shapes. One's a kite, equilateral, I'm sorry, triangle, and one's a kite. So this is four and this is three. Again, seven. Now, if I put four of these together and three of these together, by taking the five-pointed star and folding it together, oh, there's four, and there's five. I mean, there's three. This is what I did. Ever since then, in college, I found this when I was there. Matter of fact, the drawing behind this ear is that very drawing that came from that period, time period. But what I did know for a while is that the distance from here to here and from here to here and here to here are equilateral triangles. There are four equilateral triangles. I didn't do anything but fold these together. And when I sat it down, you know, on a table, there are the equilateral triangles. So, if I take a pentagram, by the way, oh, here it is. Rudolf Steiner said, he said, the image of the pentagram is the seal of the etheric body. Rudolf Steiner. Okay, so here it is, pentagram. So I put the kite in here. Now it's gone, and now I put the triangle. Just to show you, they fit. They're accurate. So I put them together. Here's the chapter here. Okay, just like the one I just showed you, but there's a little one, except at the bottom, I use a triangle made out of metal. But the other three triangles, one, two, and three, are exactly the same size. So if I take this out, you can see that the sides are also equilateral triangles. Perfect. All right, so to show you something amazing. <clears throat> okay, this is the big discovery for me. And this, it, nobody's seen this before because this is the first time I brought it out. So you guys are the first to ever see this in the world, that this could happen. I put this little kite in the hole. See there, so where's the kite? Here's, here's the kite. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm going to take that kite 
and I'm going to take it out of there. Okay, so there'll just be white without a line. Okay, I'm going to do this in front of you. Okay, taking it out. I'll do this again, so it's not so often, but it becomes an equilateral triangle. So if I draw a line or I'll take a string, go all the way around this one, take that same string, go all the way around here, they're the same. What? They're the same. What? The same distance. So if this is two and this is two and this is two, this is two, this is two, and this is one and one. Can you believe that? So what that means is, is that the heart has seven equal surface areas. They have two forms. A platonic form has all equal surface areas. Those only have one shape, one face. The Chester Hughes has two faces, but all the surface areas are the same, just like the platonic forms. But this has seven sides. The octahedron has six, and the cube has eight. So this is the seven. This is known as an interval. So if I take this out, like I showed you before, I could probably get it in there before I, I drop it. There it is. Same copper two. I'm gonna take it out, put it in the triangle. I can't I can't believe we're seeing I do my best to get this so you can see what I'm doing, you know, you can see that I'm not trying to switch something here. This is known as white magic, not black magic, white magic. Why? Because anybody can do this. And everything I've discovered about this, including this guy right here, I give away. You're the first to see this. Now... Here's the check to Hadrian. But it's edges only. It's edges only. Okay. Now I made it so this can be, it can be flexible, not just rigid. This is the human heart, geometrically. <clears throat> that means it's an archetype. That means this is where the original form came from but once it enters into life or into the human being or into nature okay it can have lots of variations so i mean some hearts are classified as giraffe shapes some of them are classified as amphibian shapes some of the heart shapes are based like on basketballs Right from the doctors, not from me. And some of the doctors say it's shaped like a football. Give me a break. Now, anyway, this is the geometry of the left ventricle of the human heart, which is the main ventricle. The other one's like a napkin. It just falls on the ground when it's cut off. So this is what's taken so long, is that what is behind this? What What is going on? You saw that... This form and this form and this form are all equal, which is amazing. So, to the heart, there has to be um, associated warmth, and there has to be uh, associated uh, um, light, and these come from forms. So, the tetrahedron, which is known as 
fire, Steiner said on the other side, it's warmth, can't see it. And then the next form that comes in is the uh, octahedron. An octahedron is known as air, as Steiner took the opposite and said it was it was um, I'm getting ahead of myself. He said it was light. Air is what you see, light you can't. Okay, so in the heart, there should be some kind of relationship between warmth and light, which would be the tetrahedron and the octahedron. So follow me that. Everybody knows what a tetrahedron looks like. Well, if you don't, this is what it looks like. That's a tetrahedron. Uh, it's coming out of the geometry. This is not fantasy. This is real. This is known as warmth. And you know that that is the esoteric part, the spiritual part of what's going on with the heart. Now, sure, okay, all right. I don't know how you did that, but that's warmth. So where's light? Well, light is in icosahedron. Icosa has eight sides. Now here's icosahedron. There it is. It's made up of eight triangles. And if we keep the spanning, it turns into the chestahedron. I have the geometric equivalent to warmth and light. That's in the geometry of the human heart. So, I'll show you these things in reality as far as in the cube. Yeah, I mean, I was three cubes in the cube. So, everything has to go into a cube because it is known as Earth. Okay, so here's the tetrahedron in the cube. At root three, and that's the size it is. When Even when you open it up, you saw it was smaller. Okay, the next one becomes the octahedron. That's this one. You yeah, just saw that unfolded. Now it sits at root three, too, in the cube. And of course, the last one is the seven-sided form that fits in the cube at root three. So now what I showed you before is coming from a cube and its transformation. So I have that cube, that one. So here, I made the chestahedron, okay, because I know what the inside form looks like. And of course, the outside form, you guys know. But this is what happens, is that you would think, well, how can you make that move? You see, what happens is the heart spins. The heart spins when it moves in our body. So it's kind of like, here's the apex of the heart. That's the end of it that sits on the diaphragm. And this is the base, uh, which sits up on the so forth, near the, uh, uh, and embedded in the lungs. And then and as this moves, it twists. You see that twist? That's what your heart does in less than one second throughout your life. Okay, so I'm going to go now into what the science says, what the doctors say, what the cardiologists say, what these cardiologists researchers say. But before that, do anybody have a question? It's okay if you don't, because I can uh, keep going. I Feel have a question. Me. Yeah, and I'm going to take the spotlight off so we can see people better, I think. There, who has my the question? question? My question is, is your is your chestahedron example that you were showing the same size and scale as, a, as the heart? Did you try to make it the same scale as the heart? I did. I figured you did. <laughs> and I I have I have put it into an organic shape. You know what I mean. I've, I've made it um, natural, and I did that by going into minimum surfaces, 
which gives the actual shape answer what you're asking. I did that. Uh, and my problem is it's fine, but I got it here. Thank you, Frank. Oh, wait. Don't thank me yet. Here it is. <laughs> that person has an enlarged heart, I think. <laughs> well, see, this is the geometry. Okay. Straight lines. And inside, there's a bubble. And that bubble is minimum surfaces, a natural event that happens on nature that makes everything organic. Okay, and that is the size of the heart. Of course, it's like this. So um, I have one out of bronze uh, because I, I like it so much. But here's the bronze equivalent of the size of the heart and its shape. Wow. Yes. So if we look at the heart here, here is the heart with the left and right ventricle. If you take the left ventricle off, which is what I did, there's what it looks like. And this is the, the geometry right here. This is my work. Frank, there was another question. Okay. Right, if you finished with that one, uh, it says, what direction does the heart spin? That's from Meg. What direction does it spin? Spin. Oh, it spins in both directions at the same time. The yeah. inside, the outside, both spin in opposite directions at the same time. Matter of fact, it spins. Okay, the heart moves six directions at the same time. Okay. And they're opposite directions. So it's forward, backwards, right and left, and below to above. And it moves all of those directions at the same time. They don't know that. Why? Because I have geometry. They don't, you know, they got these uh, magnets and all this other kind of stuff. They can't see this. <laughs> you can see I enjoy this. I have one more question. Since it's a good segue into the cardiology thing. Um, so hey, when no, people... no more questions for now? When okay. people have open heart surgery and they can look and so this is not visible. What you're saying is this isn't necessarily visible if you were to see somebody's heart during open or open heart surgery. No, you could see it. Oh yeah. Oh, so you can see it. Okay. Oh no, no, you can see it. You can see it moving, but you see you can't see it moving inside. You only can see the outside. Okay. They have no idea it's going in opposite directions. And why is that? Because they didn't study the muscles correctly. Why is that? Because they've been led for 150 years in the wrong direction. All right. So I don't want to criticize them. So <clears throat> here are x-rays of the heart. And from that side, you could see that the heart sits in a cube at 45 degrees. It sits in this side direction, 45 degrees, and it sits in that direction at 45 degrees. This is right out of the literature. I'll show it. Here it is. This is right out of the literature. And that shows that the top view sits at 45. The front sits at 45, and the side sits at 45. And so I... You know, to show you for sure, there are the angles. Look, see, they're 45 degree angles. That's not 45, this is it root three. The top is at root three. The side is at root three. The front is at root three. They think it's 45 degrees. Why? Because they don't know geometry. They don't know. That root three is just an angle that appears to be 45 degrees from the front to the top of the side. So they're backing me like mad, like mad. Here's, here's the heart sitting at 40, sitting at root three. Here are other researches they've done that shows other x-rays. This is for this is root three. This is root three. That's root three from the top. I mean, it's just I've got it all over. 
I have so much documents from the doctors. You can't believe it. They can't. There's nothing anybody can do. So you can say, well, the cube's not there. Of course it's not there. But it was. It's an archetype. It's not supposed to be there anymore. It's an archetype. But there must be some kind of foundation, some kind of knowledge, some kind of wisdom behind why the heart is at an angle like this. I mean, well, there's no explanation for why the heart is like that angle or these angles. This is what they say. Here they got. This is one third and this is two thirds. That's the best they can come up with the measurements that the doctors can come up with. Okay, <clears throat> there's a little documentation. Uh, have an uh, question on that? If you don't, I'll go on. Okay. The valves. The valves are controlled by the blood, not the heart. The valves open and close due to the vortex of the blood streaming through it. So, here's a picture of the top of the heart. So, this is the microvalve. The big one is the microvalve, where the blood comes in, and it leaves out the aortic valve, and the aortic valve is off on the side. Now, it looks bigger, but it's only because these leaflets have expanded because this is a, you know, it's a person who passed. Okay, so if I take my geometry, and I put it on a sheet of plastic, You can see there's the triangle, and in the middle is the microvalve, and on the side is the aortic. Look, you can see they're drawn on the actual heart. There's the aortic, and this is the micro. They don't know anything about why these sizes are. As a matter of fact, I had a doctor come over to my house, and he's a surgeon, he's a heart surgeon in the Mayo Clinic. And he said, this is unbelievable. So we don't know anything about the geometry of this. So there's a bigger one. That shows you the, the Arctic and Michael. See how they're very close together? That's because they're in the same ventricle. And the same ventricle is the chest of Hedon spinning. And when the chest of Hedon spins, it makes the Arctic valve. You see the Arctic circle? I don't know if you could see the main part of the black. But there's a circle if I spin this. That circle is a vowel. And the distance between the triangle that goes around here like this is where the aortic valve is. That's wonderful. So to work on the valve, I made the valve, I made the heart, uh, made the heart that I showed you out of plastic. And then I put in the form that's in the heart and the aortic valve. And you can see, there's the mitral valve and here's the aortic. And what happened, another thing about the doctor said, is that he agreed perfectly because if I make this right straight flat, this angles at 40 degrees. And that's what they said, it's, things that, it's just wonderful to get these researches from these people. And then the reason that it goes 45 degrees Okay. Sorry, I automatically, I mean, I hit something wrong. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> so, here's the already, here's the micro valve. You know, my picture is small again, so I don't really know if I'm showing it's in the right spot. Frank's video is turned off. Oh, there it is. Okay, so... Here is the chestahedron spitting. There's the micro valve. And the reason it's at 45 degrees is because 
the aortic valve gets bent over because of the right ventricle. And the reason it's 40 degrees is because the apex of both the right and the left ventricle have to come together, and they do at 40 degrees. Another reason why. This is another great thing that they back me up on. Here's one I took out of the heart. Yeah. There's the micro valve. Uh, I'm sorry, the aortic and the micro. You can see, huh? Same thing going on here. Okay, so I've been backed up on root three. I've been backed up on the valve sizes. I've been backed up on the uh, size and uh, architecture of the left ventricle, um, the area that where the blood takes its shape. Uh, and also um, the shape of the heart. The doctor came over here with another doctor, both of them. And th th he says, look, look, look at it. See, it's exactly the shape. I said, is that the shape? He says, yes. He says, I just operated on these. This is exactly the shape that the micro or that the uh, left ventricle takes. Okay. Um, How uh, about questions? I've only got about 15 more minutes, but and that's okay because I can round this up and, and I can talk about it. I Okay, there's two other things I can talk about. I can talk about the blood flow and how it reverses. You see, the blood flows through the heart in a clockwise direction, and it never changes that clockwise direction, the vortex. The vortex is, is, is turning clockwise. And when it comes out of the aorta, it's turning opposite directions. It's turning counterclockwise. And yet the blood never um, stops or untwists itself. It's always twisting in the same direction. OK, they can't explain that. And I couldn't either until. I worked on it for a while. Okay, so I can show that about the blood flow. And I also can show the structure of the biofiber, cardiomyofibers that allow the heart to reverse directions at the same time. So the blood coming into the heart is leaving in the opposite direction. And that takes place in the myofiber layers that they have been struggling with for 150 years because one doctor said that the blood or that the muscles are made out of sheets they're not they're made out of ribbons and these ribbons are interlaced among each other it has nothing to do with sheets so i have one thing i could show you here this is this is what they've been doing for the last hundred years and they're saying that the uh, these vortexes, okay, are made from sheets. They don't work. And why don't they work? Because the only way they can make a sheet work is if they cut the base of the heart off. And that's what they're doing. They're cutting the base and all their research. So here's a research that's current. And every one of these show that they cut the base off, the top. The base of the heart has been removed. Of course, they don't know what the apex does. They don't know how it comes back in the opposite direction. They don't know that. But they do know that they have to cut the top off to be able to reveal that the muscle fibers are reversing. Okay, so you didn't ask this question, but I... This is the way that the fibers in the muscles of the heart work. The muscles come up, all right? They come up in a anti-clockwise. They curve over the top and go back down the opposite direction. And they're all the same ribbon. So here's three of them. This is my archetype of the mild fibers of the heart. So what happens at the bottom, there's an apex. They don't know that. Why? I'm not really sure. But 
as the muscles come out the outside of the heart, they go over the top and they go inside the heart in the opposite direction. So this one's going, they say, why does the heart change its myofibro directions at 60 degrees? <laughs> That's because there's 60 degrees here in this heart. And it goes down and it makes an apex that tightens right up and that a, the apex of the heart does not leak unless it's really something serious. This is the microvalve here. And of course, all together, they look like this. This is the way the micro, I use the red to show you that, that that's the major weave. Okay, so as you turn it around, I'll open up the, the side to show you that these muscles are fibers are turning in opposite directions. Look at that. <laughs> And look, it just goes right over the top and goes down in the opposite direction, goes past to the apex, back up to the top. And they're all woven. It's impossible to do this with sheets, planes. So here's another view of it. There's the top with the three bands. But these bands, there's a lot of them. And at the bottom, you could see that it makes an apex that has a shutter configuration. And that's how it closes up. The only way you can make sheets work is to do this, is to cut the top off. See how the top is going that direction, but the outside going this direction. And it goes over the top. They cut the top off. No, I don't know. These are sheets. No. They're not sheets. You can't, you can't, you can't cut space off and make this work. So, what I'm trying to tell you is that my interest is not in the physical part of the heart in such a way that it's a pump, okay, or that I'm interested in artificial uh, hearts, or I'm interested in uh, transplants, or. I'm interested in the machines. I'm not. None of that. This is geometry. Geometry is giving you the lawful transformation of form. And the behind all form is, is matter and spirit. You can't have one or the other. You gotta have both. So in this, the spiritual connection is amazing. And it's it's just it's constantly happening. Look, here's a here's this. Look at the two circles again. The first circle with the micro valve. This little right ventricle, which is half. Yeah, this circle here goes around like that. And there you are with your two circles interrelating and balanced in the vesicle. And another thing is this, this is a, they use scaffolding. They always cut the hearts up. Okay. And this helps me because I don't have to do it. But if you notice, they very inside the micro valve. Okay. And the outside of the heart isn't really round. It's more triangular. And the doctor told me, and he says, yeah, he says, I really like this idea because the heart is triangular. And there it is. Yeah, I got an example of it out of a medical book. It's triangular. Mm -hmm. Now, I had a man who really liked my work, and he surprised me. He took me out to a place where he built a chestahedron, and here it is. I don't know about that reflection. But this chestahedron is six stories high. And in the background, there's this little spot. That's a pickup truck. All made out of stainless steel china. And it's in Puerto Rico. So, interesting, huh? How sticks and mud or a thing I just did. 
out of Patricia's class, look what happens. And this is just part of the things that have been happened. That's a big deal. So I'm going to take this, this uh, sketch I made. Here's the sketch I made. This is the geometry of the human heart. It's a pentagram with a vesica, and the vesica makes the pentagram. No one has made a pentagram from a vesica. So if I take this here, there it is. I just fold it up, and there's the chestahedron. One more thing I think I should tell you is I have that star. I don't see it. But and Frank, I, uh, you were concerned about time, but we can go all the way to 8.30. So This is what? I said you were concerned about time, but we can go all the way to 8.30. We started at 7. So. That's the one. Just so you know, you'd have some well, time. Um, I kind of planned it this way. Sure. Let me think about it a little bit. But um, well, there may be that many questions too that people have. Uh, so I'll that's wait. true. I'd like to ask. I'd like to be able to ask some questions. Uh, you know, because this this helps me to explain and also to say if there's something I missed. That that would be great. So I'm all open for. Yeah. See, this is the. This is the new geometry. The geometry, this is fantastic. There's another drawing. That makes a chestahedron, that makes a left ventricle the human heart. And so what I remember now what I wanted you to see was that if I take this, Okay, and I fold it up into three. Okay, well, what is this other part then? Well, I do have to cut that off. No, that was part of the right ventricle. Thanks. Behind me, there's a sculpture. That sculpture is the one ribbon <clears throat> of the myocardial fibers of the human heart. So I get to make sculptures too. Mm A lot of this centers around the beginning of a tetrahedron. So to find the tetrahedron, okay, I started with the tetrahedron like this. And what I did that no one else has done yet since is I opened it up. And what slipped in here are kites. That's it. Got two forms to him and her. There's a question here. Do you want to take a question now? Wow. Well, I'm ready for some questions if you have any. If you don't, I, I understand. Well, there's one in the text. It says, how is your research on the right ventricle going? Oh, going really good. It's going really good. I'm so excited. This is what I'm really excited about is the right ventricle. And the reason is because I see where the right ventricle attaches and how it's held up and how it's holding and its shape. 
Oh no, this is this is really cool. This is really new. The right venture of coming. I need to make that right, the left ventricle first, but gosh, it's a major muscle. See, the the right ventricle it is a muscle also, but it's very thin. It doesn't have to be thick. You know, it, it isn't, it's not a, a power driven. Okay, and also the, the left ventricle is not pumping the blood, okay? It's not doing that. What the left ventricle does to the human heart is it takes care of the blood. It's um, it's watching out for what we need, um, both uh, psychologically, um, wait, also spiritually and physically. And it's doing that every second or less, and it's judging and balancing everything from six directions. A cube. Even Lewis Steiner talks about the cube and its influence in the 1909 lecture that the exolescent people use. Um, so he is he is working with the same kind of thing. So I'm doing it. I'm doing it geometrically. I'm not interested in <clears throat> what the doctors examine with their machines, which runs their whole research. Magnets, electricity, sound, scaffolding, x-rays. <clears throat> That's what leads their research. That's why they can't find this. Because measure, 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 measure. That's what these things do. I miss we need them. They need them. But also, you know, as this gentleman's here is just like another tool in a toolbox. Okay, it's like a pair of pliers or a screwdriver or a wrench. It's like those kind of things that at one time or another, everybody in all the different fields are going to need these different tools sometime. <clears throat> That's all. There's nothing against any of them. They're all trying to do what they can. The only problem is, I tell you, my problem is, my personal problem is, is that I don't come from the system. What that means is, is that I don't have the right degree, okay? Um, I don't have medical training, okay? My training is art, okay? My training is visual art. A non-communicational device that leaves out words. Okay, so I can communicate with anybody based on an image, a drawing. I mean, I have this, this you know, all this started. Okay, it's just absolutely amazing what I find is because there is a being behind this. And Oh my goodness. I mean, who did this? Who, who? And I'm just scratching the surface. Oh my God. But there's, there's, this is not random choice. This isn't coincidences. This isn't. But the artists tell me that they don't like my work, but it's too rigid. The science don't like my work because it's too artistic. So I'm caught between the two. I can't say I have any friends on either side, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's okay. So Kathy's still asking about the right ventricle. She says, what does the right ventricle do if the left takes care of the blood? Okay, so what does the left ventricle, the blue blood, do well i gotta understand the question what the left left ventricle takes care of the blood right yes what the right ventricle will do what does the right ventricle do 
it turns the blood in the right direction so that it can fire out in and out. Uh, it also allows the uh, the entrance of the blood that's coming from above down. It spins in the opposite direction as the blood that's moving up. So the right ventricle, okay, has a lot to do with not causing a disturbance when those two meet. If you didn't have the right ventricle, there would be some clash of vortexes. Uh, but, <clears throat> you know, it holds 80, the, you know, the veins hold 80, for 80, something like 85% of the blood. The red blood is only about 15. Okay. But uh, that proportion is fine because the blue blood, you know, it doesn't pulse. I mean, it, it doesn't have this back and forth movement that the red blood needs. Um, the 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 blue blood is also is kind of like you know it's full of carbon dioxide. It's it's in a way it's dying. You know, compared to the right, but we need both. We need both these things because the, the the blue blood is actually there as a more of a storage than it is um, there to propel itself into organs or into capillaries or into tissues in the periphery. The blue blood doesn't do that. It doesn't so, have to be a thick muscle. So there is another question. Do you want another one at this point? Yeah. Okay. Re Rebecca's asking, are the ribbons shaped like a Mobius strip? No, they're not. Uh, if you Mobius strip, it, when it flips over and twists, okay, it can't go on. It has to end. Okay, just like a rubber band. Okay. So you can't cut the Mobius strip and have it continue into another Mobius strip. Impossible. So, no. I tried it. I made them. <laughs> I'm I made them up these strips. No, it's not. It would be nice if it was, but it's not. Then Katja has a question. It's she says it might be off topic, but I wonder if you came across any correlation to the lion when I saw the picture you showed by the doctor picturing the view of the aorta on top of the heart. I was reminded of what Steiner said about the relationship of the heart to the lion and how the heart was only being formed on earth together with the appearance of the lion. If I got this right. Well, you get me out of geometry <laughs> and uh, in that question. So um, I think you need to stick with, with Rudolf Steiner, not me for sure in this uh, question about the lion. Um, I've read a lot of things, okay, and some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. Doesn't mean it's wrong. And Richard's wanting a little more explanation about the vesica. He's asking, what is a vesica? What is a vesica? A vesica, a vesica is an almond shape that divides the space into three equal spaces. And you cannot get a triangle in a circle without the vesica. It won't go. It won't fit. But because of when the two circles interlap, that line becomes root three, can go all the way around. That's one thing. Okay. The vesica is where they draw and paint all of the higher beings. Christ is in there. Buddha is in there. They always put these big, big... Um, leaders, okay, and the vesica. Why? Because the vesica is the symbol of balance. And these particular people, okay, are not caught on one side or the other, and the polarity of these people are balanced, and so they look up to. And you need the vesica. Especially since it's moving, uh, the directions are moving six different directions at the same time. And <clears throat> that vesica 
is is probably the best example you're ever going to find between balancing polarities. And we got to do that here. Because if we don't, it hurts the heart. Because the heart is trying to balance the imbalances that we're presenting it. And so we have to learn to help our heart. Okay. And then the warmth and then the light and then joy and enthusiasm and uh, all of the attributes that the heart has and carries. Okay. And we can help it, keep it healthy, keep it balanced so it doesn't have to do all the work. I mean that the that these these little sticks that I gave you that I showed you make the, the most fantastic geometry yet. And now, <clears throat> platonic forms have intervals. The Chetahedon, the the seven sided form is an interval between two platonic forms. An interval now, because that enters the realm of music. Okay, it's an uneven number. Okay, so it becomes much more open. So you wonder, well, why do you suppose it has that kite shape? Well, what happens here is that you'll see when the heart moves, okay, all of the action in the movement is at the apex, not the base. Look, see how all the action is at, at the peak, at the bottom, and it's moving. That's why the kite shape, okay, has to move, and it does, in the real heart. Okay, and then we had another one. Is a pig's heart the same as your discoveries here, or do they only apply to human heart? Uh, say that again. What kind of heart? Pig's heart. Uh, whose heart? A, you know, the animal, a pig. Pig. Pigs. Pigs. Oh, you mean the animals and amphibians and fish and so forth? Yeah. What an, is that heart? Does what you coming, what you're telling us, is it only apply to the human heart? Yes. If you want to know about the other hearts, the lizards and and the snakes and fish and have at it. That's not my work. <laughs> we didn't come from a worm. She's just making the point that pigs' hearts are used for transplants. So, uh, interesting. Pigs' hearts are transplanted? Yes, yeah, I have no interest in it at all. That's making the human being some machine. Okay, and when it gets a pig heart, it doesn't work tough for long. And, and then the guy becomes piggish. I mean, it's just the whole thing is ridiculous. It, 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 what you've got to do is to work spiritually on the heart. Not through a pig. I understand that a person is dying of a heart problem. Maybe I'd take a pig too. I don't know. But not to criticize any of these people, but there's a lot of problems that are coming out with these transplants. See, the transplant people are all centered around the heart as a muscle. I'm not. That's not a muscle to me. It has muscle fibers that I can study to see how the current and how it affects the blood. Okay. But I have no interest in that kind of thing. I mean, it's just, um, it's too muscle machine like. I mean, that I can show that there's warmth and light in the human heart geometrically. That's kind of all I need to do right now. Okay, so does anybody else have a question or should we end our evening? 
Now you mentioned even and uneven. Evening. But, end of the evening. Oh, end of the evening. Oh, okay. okay. Um, this, this soundtrack of my computer is not that great, but uh, I'm I'm making do. Okay, there's one more thing here. So she, Kathy says, so the heart holds the blood. The heart transports the blood. Okay, it's, it's a, it is something that the blood can run through, okay, and be reinforced and helped and if there's a lack of joy or enthusiasm in a person, then that heart comes in and tries to restore that and also re hope that you will also restore it. Okay, so that's that's what it's doing. Okay, so you see, has the heart is, has feeling, willing, and thinking. Okay, all three of those have to be in balance, and they have to be in balance in six directions, and that takes a lot of work on us, and what, we've got to start working on it. Mm. Uh, Gail has a comment. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, um, I hope this doesn't take us too far afield, but I'm very interested in the fact that you were speaking to us to e this evening on this particular subject, because the Faust branch for several years now has been so attentive to the 100 year rhythm happening with Rudolf Steiner during his life. And this lecture tonight actually occurs in the very week that Rudolf Steiner was speaking from his deathbed. He was writing from his deathbed the leading thoughts and the Micaiah letters. And the first Micaiah letter starts with basically human be uh, human being that hearts are beginning to have thoughts. Mm -hmm. Hearts are beginning to have thoughts. And the one for this week particularly is a whole meditation on light and warmth, very much the way you began this the, to, today your 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 uh, address. And this weekend on Saturday, as Sandra said, we're going to hear from Peter Selg about these Micaiah letters, leading thoughts that were given from his deathbed exactly a hundred years ago. And I just find this is more than coincidence. You know, it's um, it's significant. Yeah, thank you, Gail. There's a couple more questions here. Um, they're wanting to know how can we bring extra warmth and light to the heart and then another one is, what do you think is the best thing we can do to help the heart? Okay, the first thing you need to do is you've got to replace and bring to the warmth of the heart enthusiasm. You've got to bring something that you, makes you alive, makes you breathe, and makes you uh, strive. It, may, it makes your life just so worth living. Okay. So that enthusiasm, you need to find something in your life that's either you don't do now or you will do or you don't quite understand what it is. You have to search for it. That enthusiasm is really, really important. So that's one of the things that the heart really likes is the enthusiasm. Okay, now that has to do with the warmth. Now what has to do with the light is this knowledge, this wisdom. It has to be the truth. It has to be something that's that is something that is workable, uh, that is moralistic, okay, in your work. You have to find that in your, what you do, okay, so that you can be challenged, okay, to develop that more and more and more. No matter, how, no matter how developed you are or underdeveloped, we all can work on those things. And that has to do with knowledge. That has to do with lawful thinking, okay? Not some, not not to get up caught in some kind of uh, hogwash uh, that somebody's, you know, giving you on the TV to get rich. You know, that's 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 not the approach. Thank you, Frank. You're sharing so much wisdom with us. That's the, that's the light. You know, 
there's a difference between light and air. Air surrounds everything. There's nothing that separates air, you know, in our life as we go around. But light separates us. So you want to think about those two contrasts. Those came from Steiner. And the etheric, okay, of the platonic forms, okay, in case the octahedron, which is air, okay, the etheric side of that is light. Physical side is air. And watch the air. Did you get that by chance? Mm -hmm. huh? See, it's important to study this. Because he, Steiner said that you may be able to come up with a new form, okay, but you don't have any understanding of it. And that's what you have to try to do. So that's the light, see, it's understanding. Thank you for allowing me in your homes. You are welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being willing to come. <laughs> if people want to um, unmute and say good night and thank you to Frank, please do so. Thank you, Frank. Thank good you. night. As always, thank you, thank you. so much. I'm very fortunate tonight. Hey, hey, Yuri, how you doing? Oh, thank you very Yuri's much, from Russia. Uh, yes, uh, Saint Petersburg. I, I don't know where your brother is. I saw him earlier. Yes, uh, uh, from Russia. Brian Gray. Okay. Yeah, yes, ah. uh, and, uh, and Brian. Look at old Brian there. How you doing, Brian? Good. Great. Lots of books Brian. in your thank house. You. Thank oh, you so yeah. much, Frank. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Frank. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rokes is where I started. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Yuri, you Thank see, you. huh? Isn't that great? And the octahedron is warmth and... Yumiko. And... Yumiko. Hey. Hi, Frank. Hi, Yumiko. Hi, I'm in Japan. <laughs> Which is okay. you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that Sadia? Unbelievable. Where? Oh, that's wait, wait, wait. John East. My gosh, how you doing? Man, you really <laughs> let that hair grow. Yeah, <laughs> oh, wait, Frank, Brian. Frank, uh, we want to and, thank your assistant there, Yuko. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, You're Yuko, welcome. what, what yeah. can I do without her, right? Absolutely. <laughs> you can come peek and, at us. And the Hogan's, I see the old Hogan's there. And it's really nice, uh, uh, Gail, that you gave me a nice introduction. Mm -hmm. Thank Your you, music's Gail. great. And uh, Patricia, get back on those capitals. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right, Frank. Right, Frank. <laughs> John, nice to talk to all of you. I hope I, <laughs> the best Thank for you. Thank you, Frank. Guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah, you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Frank. Good night, Frank. Thank, thank you, Frank. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.